Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new tutorial series where we're going to be building the checkers game in Python with Pygame. Now if you don't know Pygame, that's totally fine. It's a module in Python that lets us build 2D games. What I'll be doing in this series is walking you through everything that we need to do to build a full-fledged checkers game. Now I'm actually quite excited about this because this is going to be leading me up to another series I'm going to be doing, which is talking about the mini max algorithm to actually make an AI that we can play checkers against. So let me give you kind of a demo of what this should look like. I've already built the game out and I will be not necessarily copying from my other screen, but just having it up as a reference to make sure I don't get too lost. But you can see this is kind of the game of checkers. The human player is red and then the other player obviously is white. And you can see that we have an AI. So the AI will automatically move based on the move that you do. So let's see if I leave myself open here. The AI, oh, decided actually not to capture me because I would capture it back. And if we play this for a few minutes, I won't go through all of it. You'll notice that the AI is actually pretty decent uh, and it actually can play pretty well against us. So I'll be talking about how we can build this kind of AI, of course, after we've built the game in a separate series. So stay tuned for that. All right. So that being said, that's pretty much it. All I want to say quickly is this is not a beginner tutorial series. If you're an intermediate, you've worked in Python before, that's awesome. I'm going to try my best to teach you guys some new, more advanced stuff in this series. So yes, we will be going through and just building the game, but I'll be kind of throwing in some more advanced techniques and explaining how those work. So you're definitely going to learn something other than just how to build checkers if you want to follow along with this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is just install a package. This is called Pygame. So we need Pygame again, which is the module that we're going to use to do all of the graphics. So what you can do is open up a command prompt or open up a terminal. And what you need to do is type pip if you're on Windows or pip3 if you're on Linux or if you're on Mac. So pip or pip3, depending on your operating system. And then the word install and then Pygame. So of course, you need to already have Python installed on your system for this to work, but type pip or pip3 install Pygame. That should go through and install this. You can see for me, it was already installed. It says defaulting to user installation, blah, blah, blah. We already have it installed. Anyways, uh, if this did not work for you for some reason, that probably means that pip is not in your system path. So I will link a video in the description as well as I'll put a card in the corner here that will tell you how you can actually install and fix pip. Uh, so follow along with that. It won't be titled like how to fix pip, but just trust me in that video, it goes through and it explains how to actually fix pip. Okay, so once we've done that and we've installed Pygame, the first thing we're going to do is make a new Python file. You can see I'm using VS Code for this tutorial series, which is just the editor that we're going to use. And let me just zoom in a bit so you guys can actually read what's going on. Uh, but what we're going to do is make a new Python file. I've named mine main.py and I'm putting that inside of this checkers tutorial folder here. And I'm simply going to type import Pygame like that and just make sure that this works. So if you're working in VS Code, what you can do is install the Python extension. So if you go to this extension tab right here, it's on the left hand menu bar, type Python, click here and install it. Then you'll be able to debug Python scripts, you'll be able to run Python scripts, and everything should work out well for you. So what I'm going to do here is just press this run button, and this will simply run the current script that I'm on. You can see that it says hello from Pygame, and that means that everything is working and Pygame has been installed properly and we're good to get started. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to try to build kind of a module around the checkers game and then add kind of like an API. I don't want to use big words to confuse anyone, but an application programming interface on top of the game so that we can use it with an AI later on. So you'll see what I mean by that as we go through. But what I'm going to do right now is just make a new folder inside of my checkers folder. And I'm just going to call this one checkers like this. So inside of here, what we're going to do is actually make a new file. I'm going to call this underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi. So two underscores init two underscores dot pi. What this will do is initialize this folder here as a package or a module or whatever you want to call it. And that will allow us to actually import stuff directly from this package in kind of a special way, uh, which we'll be doing later on. Now, what we're also going to do is do an underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi inside of our upper level directory. So I have main.py, init.py, and then checkers. Again, that's inside of a folder right here. Um, so it's inside of this checkers tutor tutorial folder that I have open. And once we've done that, we can go back to the main.py script. And now we can start actually writing a little bit of code. 
So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna set up a Pygame display. This is where we're actually gonna be drawing everything onto. Then we're gonna set up like a basic event loop. And what that's gonna do is check if we press the mouse or if we press a certain key or whatever we're doing, it's gonna check for that. And then once we've set up the main loop, we can set up some basic drawing. So essentially draw the board for the chessboard, draw the pieces, all of that, and then start getting into the actual logic of the game. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say win in all capitals because this is gonna be a constant value is win.display.set underscore mode. And inside of here, I'm gonna type width and then comma height. Now these are gonna be two, two variables that we are going to define. And what I'm gonna do now is go inside of this checkers folder that we've created. I'm gonna make another Python file and I'm gonna call this, oops, it's lowercase constants.py. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all the constant values inside of this file here. So that if we ever wanna change anything, we only need to go to one file and we can really quickly see all of the variables and we can change everything that we need to. So inside of constants.py, I'm gonna import pygame. We'll use that later on. And now what I'm gonna do is say width comma height equals 800 comma 800. If you haven't seen this type of uh, way of defining variables, it just means width is equal to 800 and height is equal to 800. Now you can define this to be whatever you want, but just keep in mind if you change this value, you're gonna have to change a few other ones uh, accordingly. So just maybe leave it the same, but this is 800 pixels high by 800 pixels wide. Next thing I'm gonna do is define the amount of rows and columns we're gonna have in our chessboard, so, or checkers board, sorry. So we're gonna have eight by eight, that is a standard checkers board. So I'm gonna say eight by eight like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say square underscore size. So essentially how big is one square of our checkerboard? And I'm gonna make that equal to the width integer divided by the rows. Now we could uh, as well do the height divided by the columns. Or, or sorry, what am I doing? Width, sorry, this should be width divided by calls, not, uh, it's not gonna make a difference, but it makes more sense to do the width divided by the amount of columns rather than the width divided by the amount of rows. So now we have a few constants here, width, height, row calls, square size. While we're in this, I'm just gonna define a few variables for some different colors we're gonna use. So in Pygame, when we use colors, they are red, green, and blue. Uh, so RGB color codes. So for red, obviously, we're gonna do 255, comma zero, comma zero. This means we're gonna fill the entire amount of red. We're going to have zero green and zero blue. And just so we know, red, green, blue goes up to 255 inclusively. So you can use any value for these uh, between zero and 255. Next, we're gonna do white. White is simply 255, 255, 255. And then we're gonna do black, which is equal to zero, zero, zero. And finally, we're gonna do blue, which we're gonna use to figure out what squares the person can move to. That was those little blue dots you were seeing before, if you remember when I ran the game. And it's gonna be zero, zero, 255. So pretty straightforward. I'll add a comment here to just say RGB, just so. We understand that's what it's in. And now we've kind of filled in the constants. We'll do a few other things here later, but we can skip that for right now. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna import the constants that I defined here into this main.py file. So to do that is actually pretty simple. What I can do is I can say from checkers dot constants import, and then I can import the variables that I want, which are width and height. Now the reason I can do this and I can reference checkers directly is because inside of checkers, we added this init.py file. This init.py file tells us that, hey, this folder is actually a Python package. And because of that, we can import specific things from it. So just to show you, if I went inside this init.py file and I said, from constants import star, so that means import everything from constants. What I would actually have to do now if I wanted to import width and height is simply say from checkers import width height. The reason for that is because inside of the init.py, I import everything from the constants file. So what happens is as soon as I import this folder checkers, it automatically runs this, which means it will automatically import all the stuff inside of constants. Now, we're not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get rid of this just cause I don't wanna confuse anyone if that doesn't make sense. Uh, but that's uh, kind of just the explanation there and I figured I'd show that to you guys. So let's go back to from checkers.constants import width height. 
Okay, so now that we have the window, we're gonna set a caption for it. So I'm gonna say pygame.display.set underscore caption. And inside of here, I'm just gonna call this checkers. This is simply the name of our game and it will pop up kind of in the top little bar. After that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna define a main function. This main function is gonna be what we run to actually run the game. And in here, we're gonna create what's known as an event loop that's gonna run uh, every, you know, X times per second that will check if we've pressed on something, it will update the display, it will do all that. So I'm gonna say run equals false like that, or sorry, what am I saying? <laughs> run equals true, my bad. I'm gonna say while run, and then inside of here, I'm gonna put the event loop. So the idea being that we're gonna call the main function from outside, it's gonna start running all of this, and then there's gonna be a while loop inside of here, which will do all of the event handling and drawing everything. So while run, which is just the variable we defined up here is true, we'll do this loop. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a clock. So in Pygame, if we want our game to run at a constant frame rate, so like 60 FPS, for example, we can define a clock, and the clock will make sure that our main event loop doesn't run too fast or too slow. This is good because in a game, if you have like a really fast computer, it would run faster if you didn't have this and a slow computer would run slower, obviously. So you want everything to be the same so it can at max run at what we're gonna put it at. So we're gonna say clock equals pygame.time.clock. And then inside of the while loop, we're gonna say clock.tick. And I'm gonna put all capitals FPS like that. And actually up here, right above win, I'm gonna say FPS equals 60. Now, some of you may ask, why don't you put this in the constants folder? The constants folder is gonna be specific to the checkers game, whereas this is specific to us actually rendering and drawing the game, which will make more sense later, but that, that's kind of the idea of why I'm putting it in here rather than in the constants file from checkers. Okay, so now we have while run clock.tick FPS. Okay, great. And what we're gonna do is set up our basic event loop for pi game. So for event in pi game, dot, if I could type this out, event dot get. What this will do is essentially check to see if any events have happened at the current time. If they have, uh, they'll be in this list of the events dot get. And then what we can do is look at the event and see if it is a specific type. If it is say we us hitting the quit button, we'll quit. If it's like pressing a certain key, we can do something else. So we say if event dot type, equals equals pi game dot and in all capitals quit. This just means we hit that red button at the top of the screen, which we'll see in a second. Then what we're gonna do is say run equals false. So that will end this loop right here. And then at the very end of our loop, we're gonna say pi game dot quit. So essentially if we make it to this line of code, so this while loop ends, we will quit the game, which just means get rid of the window that we're gonna be popping up. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna say if event.type equals equals pi game dot mouse button down. So this just means we pressed any mouse on our mouse down. If we did that, or any mouse, what am I saying? Any button on our mouse down, excuse me. If we do that, then we will check to see, hey, did we press on a red piece? Are we moving? Whose turn is it? All of that kind of stuff we'll do inside of here. But for now, I'm just gonna simply type pass. All right, so now that we have that, we have a window set up. We have the event loop. And let's actually go ahead and run this and see what we're getting. So when I run this, you can see we get just a black box and it says checkers at the top. All right, so I'm gonna quit that and that means that we're doing things properly so far. And now what we're gonna work on is actually making it so we can draw that checkerboard on the display and we set up a few classes that are gonna represent, um, you know, all of the stuff that we need to draw on the screen essentially. So I'm gonna go inside to this of this checkers folder here, and I'm gonna create a new file, and I'm gonna call this board.py. Now this, if you haven't guessed, is where we're gonna put a class named board, and this board class is gonna represent a checkers board. So what it will do for us is it will handle, say, all of the different pieces moving. Whose turn is it? Or actually, it won't handle that, but it will handle moving specific pieces, deleting specific pieces, drawing itself onto the screen. That's what this class is gonna do. So we're gonna say import pie game like this, and we're gonna say class board like that and define an init method uh, that we will define in just a second. Okay, so let me just go over to my file here. So inside of the init, we'll actually just leave it with self and we're just gonna define a few attributes of this board class. So the first thing that we're gonna have is an internal representation of the board. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to make a bunch of objects, which are just like, you can think of them as just pieces, right? Like red pieces or white pieces. And we're going to store them in a two dimensional list inside of this class. So it would look if I can get get this working properly, something like this, right? We might have like white zero, meaning there's no piece there. White zero, meaning there's no piece there, right? White, and then maybe there's a red one here and there's nothing and there's a red one here and there's nothing and there's a white one here. That's kind of what this is gonna look like. We're not gonna use white and red, but just to give you an idea, we're gonna have a two dimensional list because we have eight rows and eight columns. So we'll have eight interior lists and inside of each of those lists, we will have eight different elements and those elements will be pieces, which will tell us if they're red, if they're white, if they're a king piece, all the other stuff that we need for, um, what do you call it, for checkers. All right, so now we have the board. The next thing that we'll do is we'll say self.turn equals zero. What I'm gonna say here is zero will mean that, um, actually, do we, I don't think I even need to define a turn in here. Sorry, I'm gonna not define that. We'll do that in another class, but we just need to keep track of, is it red's turn? Is it white's turn? So we know who can move, right? Next, I'm gonna say self.selected underscore piece equals none. So this is telling us, hey, have we selected a piece yet? Have we not selected a piece? Let's define that. And then I'm gonna say self.red underscore left equals self.white underscore left equals 12. So the point of this is saying, okay, we wanna keep track of how many red and how many white pieces we have. In checkers, we have 12 of each. So we'll set a constant value up here, or not a constant, but we'll just set this equal to 12. And then as soon as we remove a white or red piece, we can subtract from that. Next, we're gonna say uh, self.red underscore kings equals self.white underscore kings equals zero. If you're unfamiliar with the syntax, this just means these are both equal to zero. Like if red kings is equal to white kings and white kings is equal to zero, then red kings is equal to zero, right? So that's what this means. And that's all we need for the init. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define a draw underscore cubes. Um, now we could call this something more meaningful maybe, but we're gonna say self win. And what this is gonna do is say, okay, give me some surface, which is gonna be our window, that's what win stands for, to draw the red and black cubes on in a checkerboard pattern. So let me just run the other one and we'll have a look at it here to see what we actually need to do. Okay, so we need to draw red first, then black, then red, then black, then red, then black, and so on in a checkerboard pattern. So we're gonna to need to write some code that can do that. I will show you how we do that right now. Okay, so what we're gonna to do to start is we're gonna fill the entire window so win.fill with black. Now I need to import black, remember from my constants file. So what I'm gonna say is from dot constants import black. Now I'm using dot because when we are in the same package as something else, we need to specify, hey, this is what's known as a relative import. We're going to import from dot constants, which just means from something in the same directory as us named constants. So we're gonna fill the window with black and we're gonna say for row in range. And in this case, we're gonna just put up here rows. So we know how many rows we have. So for row in range rows. And then we're gonna say for call in range row mod two, eight, two. Uh, and not eight, sorry, this will be rows. Now, what am I doing here? Why have I done mod two? Well, we wanna draw a checkerboard pattern, right? So when we start the column here, we either need to start in column zero or column one. So let me just bring this checkerboard pattern back up again so I can explain this. Essentially what I'm saying is, okay, if the row is zero, then what we'll do is we'll say row mod two, which obviously zero mod two is just zero. So we will start by drawing a red square in column zero. Then we will step by two, we'll draw a red square in column two, and then in column four, and then in column six. Now, when row goes to one, we're gonna start drawing the red cube in column one because row mod one, if it's, or sorry, one mod two is one, so we're gonna start in column one. And then we will skip over columns again, and we will go uh, one, three, five, seven. Next, what are we gonna start at? Because it's gonna be two, we're gonna go again, and we're gonna say zero, two, four, six, right? That's kind of the idea behind doing this, and this is probably the simplest way we can actually write this code. So what we'll do is we need to figure out where we're drawing this. So we're gonna say pygame.draw.rectangle 
We're going to draw it on the window. We're going to draw it with color red, which we'll import from up here. And while we're up here, we'll actually import the square size as well, because we're going to need to use that. So what this is saying is, okay, draw a rectangle, draw it on the window, draw it with some color in this case, which is red. And then we need to give what's known as a rect argument. So a X, Y, width, and height. Let me bring back up the Pygame window so I can explain this a bit. Whenever we start drawing something in Pygame, we draw it from its top left coordinate. So top left in Pygame uh, right here is zero, zero. So if you can see where my mouse is kind of right beside this icon, this is zero, zero. As I go far to the right, I increase in the X. As I go down, I increase in the Y. So technically at the bottom here, we'd be at 800, whereas at the top we're at zero. So when I start drawing, I need to pick where is the top left of the shape I'm about to draw. So if I said zero, zero, it would be here. And then I would draw 100 wide and 100 tall to draw a square that is that dimension at that place. So that's how that works. So for our X and for our Y, what we're going to say, we're going to say row, oops, row multiplied by square size and then call multiplied by square size. And then for the width and height, we're simply going to say square size, square size. Now I know this is cutting off a bit. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Okay. So for, uh, for row and range rows, for call and range rows, pygame.draw.rect on the window red. And then of course, this is going to calculate where the top left and right should be. And then the width and height. Okay. Let's zoom back in. All right, so there we go. That should be it. I'm just going to check and make sure that's all we need to do. And I think that should be fine for drawing the cubes. So now let's test this out and make sure that this is working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from checkers dot in this case board import board. So what we'll need to do is create a new board object. So we'll have to say board equals board like that inside of here. And then at the end of every loop, and what is this telling me? This error is here. Pygame has no mouse button down. Yes, it does. What I'm going to do at the end of each loop is I'm going to say, okay, board dot draw cubes. And then we'll just pass it the window that we want to draw it on. And then hopefully this will draw it and we'll say pygame dot display dot update. So whenever we want to update the display in Pygame, we have to call this method. The way the drawing works is we'll draw on top of each other. So say I draw like a cube and then I draw a square uh, after that. So I have like one line that draws a cube and then another one that does a well cube and square, I guess could be the same thing. What am I saying? Draw cubes. Maybe we should call this draw squares. <laughs> yeah, let's call this draw squares. I realize my geometry is a bit off. So if we draw two squares, the one that we draw second is the one that we will see. That's what I'm trying to say, essentially, uh, if they were on top of each other. But anyways, we update the display after we draw the cubes. So let's press the run button. And what is it saying? Has no attribute draw squares. Did I change this? Squares, board object, save, draw squares. Am I spelling something wrong? It's no attribute draw squares. Hmm. Okay. Let me look at this. Maybe I'm spelling something wrong. I must be. Let's see. Define draw squares. Save. Really telling me it has no attribute. Let's see again. And there we go. Okay. So I don't know what was going on there, but now it seems to be working. And we have red, black, red, black, so on and so forth, and a perfect checkerboard pattern. Okay. So there we go. That is a good start. Next, what we need to do is draw all of the pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have board.py, and now what I'm going to do inside of here is I'm going to say define create underscore board. Now this is going to say self, and we'll take a pass. And what we'll do inside of here is, well, we will create the actual internal representation of the board, and we will add a bunch of pieces to the list. Now, of course, if we're going to add pieces, we need pieces. So let's make a new class in another file here called piece.py, and let's spell it properly like that. So piece.py. I'm going to say class piece like that. And then we're going to say define underscore underscore init underscore underscore. We're going to say self row call and color. So when we make a new piece, we need to pass it what row it's in, what column it's in, and what color it is. So we'll say self dot row equals row, self dot call equals call, self dot color equals color. And that should be it. We'll add a few more self.king equals false. 
So this is going to tell us, are we a king piece? If we're a king piece, that means we can jump backwards, right? If you're familiar with checkers. So we'll get to that part later, but we'll just add that in now. And let me just check my file and see what else we needed. Uh, we'll have self dot selected. That can be equal to false. Actually, I don't think we need this either. I have some code that I have written, but we don't really need. So I'm just filtering it out as we go. And what else? We need self dot direction. That is important. So self dot direction equals Hmm. We'll have to define this here. Okay. So the dilemma I'm having right now is I need to pick the direction for each piece, right? Are we going positive? Are we going negative? What way are we going essentially? So what I can do is I can say, okay, well, if we are, and let me just run this, look at the checkerboard pattern. If we are the white pieces, so we're at the top, because I believe white is at the top, we're going to move down, which means the direction we're going to go is positive. If we're thinking about the coordinate system of pie game, where if we're red, we're going to move up. So the direction we're going is negative. So let's do that inside a piece. We'll say if self dot color equals equals, and now we have to import red and white from the constants. So from dot constants import red, white. So if self dot color equals equals red, then the direction is actually going to be negative one, meaning we're going up. Otherwise, self dot direction equals one. Okay, so that handles that. And then next we're going to say self dot x equals zero and self dot y equals zero. And then what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to make another method that says calculate pause. Now what this is going to do is calculate our x and y position based on the row and column that we're in. So in this case, we're going to need to know the square size so that we can simply multiply whatever row and column we're in to figure out what our starting X and Y position should be when we draw this piece. So that's what I'm going to call calculate position. I'm going to say self dot X equals square size multiplied by self dot in this case is going to be call because we're doing X, which is the horizontal axis plus square size over over two. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be right in the middle of the square when I talk about my X and Y position. So we're going to have circular pieces, right? And circular pieces, we draw them from their center. So we have a radius around a circle and that's how we draw a circle. So our X and Y position should be in the middle of the square. So we'll just divide the size of the square by two. That will give us 50, right? So in this case, this we could literally just put this as 50 if we wanted to. And then we would be in the middle of the square. All right, so self dot y equals the same thing square size multiplied by self dot row. That's the only difference plus square size over over two. Okay, so what we'll do is simply call self dot calculate position after this. The reason I'm not just writing this code inside of here is because we're going to need to do this a few different times uh, if we change our row and column. So it just makes more sense to have a method that can do it for us. Next, I'm going to make another method. I'm going to say define make underscore king. What this is going to do is simply change the king variable. So self dot king equals true. And that just means we'll literally just make this piece of king uh, if we can. Next, we're going to draw. So we're going to say define draw. What this will do is pretty straightforward. We will draw the actual piece itself. This is actually pretty easy to do, but uh, let's go ahead and do it. So self win. We're going to start by drawing a circle and then we'll draw an outline for that circle so that we can actually see it well enough. So we're going to say pie game dot draw dot circle win self dot color, which is what we have to put here, I believe self dot color. And then we need to pick our X, Y position for the center of the circle. Actually, I think this is the right way. Yeah, I think it is. So we're going to say self dot X self dot y. And then finally, we're going to pick a radius. So for the radius, uh, we need to determine what we want that to be. And that is going to be based on how much padding essentially do we want. Let me just bring this up between the edge of the square and the circle. So if you look here, we have like maybe 10 pixels of padding on each side. So we need to define that and then we can derive what the radius should be based on that. So I'm going to define as a class variable here padding equals, let's make it say 10 or something like that. I'm going to see if that's what I use for the other one. Yeah, we'll make it padding is equal to 10. And we'll define a border, which is essentially what do we want the outline to be. So we can, I guess we call this outline. 
So outline equals two. All right, so now when we draw, what we're gonna do is figure out, okay, the radius of our circle should be equal to, first of all, the square size uh, over over two, right? Because the radius is not the diameter, so we have to divide the square size, minus the uh, self dot padding over over two. So sorry, I've made a bunch of mistakes here. This should just say self dot padding, not divided by two, not multiplied by two, whatever I said. Uh, this is the correct math is minus self dot padding. Okay, so if that assuming is that that's the padding we want on each side. So then I'll just put radius here. And yeah, I guess that's lowercase variable. And then that should draw the circle for us. Now, the next thing we'll do after that is we will draw an outline. So we'll simply say, Pi game dot draw dot circle. And we can literally copy the exact same thing. We're just going to change the color and the radius. So for the radius, we're going to say radius plus self dot outline. The reason for this is whatever the actual radius of our button is, we'll just go two pixels outside of that. And actually, we'll have to reverse how we draw this, but we'll go two pixels outside of that. So we draw a slightly larger circle. And then on top of that circle, we're going to draw the interior one. So it will look like it's a border. But really what we've done is we've drawn a big circle and then a smaller circle inside of that circle that's covering what that interior circle's color actually is, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to start by drawing the larger circle, which will be radius plus outline. And then on top of that, I draw the smaller circle. So you only see, you know, the two pixel difference in the radius between these as the outline. Now for the color, we need to pick a color that is not the piece color and is not one of the square colors so we can actually see it. So I believe that we can pick something. I'm trying to think of like a decent, maybe we'll go with a gray or something. So let's just define uh, gray inside of our constants and we'll use that. So inside of constants, we'll say gray equals, and we'll go 128, 128, 128. That's just a common color code for gray. And then instead of color here, we will simply do gray and then we'll import that from constants. Okay, great. So now we have, radius, we have the actual circle being drawn for the piece. And I think for right now, that's all we need to do. I'm going to add one more method just to make it easier for us if we need to debug this later. And it's just going to be wrapper. What this means is what is the internal representation of this object? You may have seen before if you print out like an actual object that you've created, you get some weird like object at x blah, blah, blah location. To avoid that, we can simply make our own representation of the object. And that's again, just if we print this out or if we look at it, it will show us this. So I'm simply just going to say uh, that we will use the color. So return the string of self dot color. So wrapper has to be a string. So we'll just take whatever our color is and just turn it into a string. So we'll see like 0, 0, 255, 0, 255, 0, whatever the color of our object is. Okay. So now we have piece. And if we want to see them, well, we need to start creating some pieces. <laughs>